everybody, and welcome to the Historical Sew Along series, where we'll take you through the ins and outs of some simple historical sewing projects to build up your wardrobe and your hand skills. Maybe even both at the same time. From prep work to finished product, we'll do it together, following step-by-step instructions with some tips and tricks sprinkled in along the way. This series is meant for all skill levels, but it is especially nice for beginners to build confidence while building a solid toolkit of techniques. So feel free to pause, rewind, rewatch, and fast forward to whichever parts you need as many times as necessary. So with all of that said, let's get to the good stuff. Today's video is part one of three in our Apron Sew Along series, and I know that a lot of you have been wondering about patterns for some of these projects, and we do have some more sew alongs in the works that will have a pattern component, but for this project, we're gonna kick it a little bit old school, and by that I mean a la 18th century milliner, where numbers are a crutch and inches are optional. If you're clutching your yardstick right now, please don't worry. You can very easily adapt these methods with measures. We just want to really encourage you all to start thinking outside of the inch and inside of the 18th century. But at the end of the day, do what makes you happy because that's really what this all is about. And while we definitely want you to be able to use these sew alongs as a way to kind of grow and expand your repertoire, um, if you are a diehard number junkie, go with it. We understand that everybody works a little bit differently. And so with that in mind, let's go ahead and get started. In terms of materials and supplies, we're going to need the usual suspects. So pins, needles, scissors, thread, fabric, uh, tape for the waist ties. Some of you were asking some really great questions on our live about thread. So I just wanted to cover some of the basics here too. Remember that the weight of thread is important. So pairing the right weight of thread uh, to the weight of your fabric, but also pairing the right type of thread to the fiber of your fabric. So for instance, linen thread or just thread as it's called in the 18th century is great for linen fabric, though it's sometimes used on cotton, silk, and wool as well, just depends. Sewing silk is typically used on silks, but we also see it used on wools as well. And lastly, sewing cotton uh, can be used for stitching on cotton fabrics. Make sure you have done any prep work for your fabric, such as pre-washing or pressing if it's necessary. And once your fabric is ready, let's go ahead and figure out the dimensions for our apron. As with our petticoat, we are going to use string theory but not like the crazy physics kind or anything like that to take a physical measure. So grab your string or tape and get yourself in front of a mirror. There really isn't a standard length or width to aprons in the 18th century. So we are just going to make a basic working apron for this tutorial. If you are copying an image, you can use these techniques and just adjust the size of the apron by eye to make your apron match whatever 18th century image it is that you are trying to replicate. So to start, let's measure for length. And we're going to do that by tucking the string into our waistline and adjusting the end of the string until we find that it's hanging at the level that we want the hem of our apron to be. Add about three quarters of an inch or so for seam allowance and then mark it with a pin on your tape. If you have stays and your petticoat, it's nice to take this measurement on top of those to get an idea of where your apron will rest in relation to your petticoat hem, but it's not necessary. So that is completely up to you how you wanna take that measure. If you need a numerical measure for ordering purposes, again, just lay the string next to a measuring tape and you can record the results. First, let's lay out our fabric and we will use the stringer tape to mark our desired length, just like we did with the petticoat. So just make a small cut to mark the spot. Then depending on your fabric, here you might choose to tear or cut your length. If your fabric doesn't tear well, go ahead and pull a thread by locating one of the weft threads on either side of your snip, and then very carefully pull that thread out from the width of your fabric. Use your scissors to cut in the gap left by pulling the thread. Uh, in the case of our checked fabric, we can actually cut along one of the cross grain threads, but we're only really able to do this because this check is woven and we have that woven stripe that runs cross grain. If this were a printed check, this would not be a very reliable way to determine if we're getting a straight cut. 
You could technically do this on solid fabrics as well if you have really good eyes, but sometimes it can be easy to lose the thread on the solid fabrics if you don't pull a thread first. So once your length is cut, we're going to cut the width. And this is a largely subjective decision as each body differs, time periods will make this differ, and so on and so forth. So consider the amount of coverage that you want for your apron and any pictorial or extant evidence that you're working with when deciding on the width of your apron panel. I think for most people, somewhere around 45 to 50 inches or so tends to work pretty well for a simple full coverage kind of working apron. If you feel like your fabric is too wide for your taste or for whatever original you're working off of, go ahead and trim some from one side. If you are thinking of binding your apron with self fabric, set aside any extra that you cut off to use later. Now is also a really good time to get rid of any unwanted, furry, or otherwise unusable salvages. And honestly, it's not a bad idea to mark the top edge of your apron with a couple of basting stitches or some other indicator so that you remember which sides are top and bottom. Uh, this is especially important if you are using a piece of fabric which has had both salvages cut off already <laughs> and if your height and width measures are pretty close in length otherwise your apron panel can get kind of turned around and you might accidentally end up with an apron a little bit wider and shorter than you wanted or vice versa depending on kind of how tall you are and how wide you wanted your apron to be once we have finished cutting our panel uh, we're going to need to now figure out how wide we want the finished waist of our apron to be. And I think the easiest way to determine this is just to hold up a scrap piece of fabric or a piece of tape to your waist and adjust until it looks good and feels comfortable and achieves any proportions that you want if you are using, say, an original image. For you number lovers, if you're looking for a number for this, I would say the sweet spot is somewhere between 10 to 14 inches uh, across the top for most bodies and for most aprons. So if your width falls into that range, you're in a pretty safe ballpark. Now, some bodies or styles might need more width, particularly fuller bodies or fuller styles. There are some aprons from the 18th century that are almost a full half waist measure, while others are maybe only a third of the waist measure in the front of the body. So just keep that in mind when you are working on this project is that there aren't a lot of hard boundaries here. There aren't a lot of rules necessarily. Uh, these measurements can shift depending on the apron that you're making. This is just to give you a basic understanding of how to put aprons together and what techniques might be used because we hope that you're gonna make many more aprons from this and we don't want you to have all 15 of them to be exactly the same. We want you to be able to apply these techniques to aprons from different time periods in the 18th century, to aprons of different styles. So try to embrace that flexibility as much as you can. Anyways, once you have determined how wide you want the finished waistline of your apron to be, if you are measuring that with a tape, go ahead and put a pin in the tape so we've marked the length. If you are binding your apron with self-fabric binding and you're using that scrap from the side that you cut off for, uh, for your measurement, you can mark that with a pin or you can just make a little snip at that point. And then all you're really going to do is cut a rectangle out of the fabric the length that you marked by about one and a half to two inches wide. If you're binding with tape and you've used that string or tape to mark that distance, go ahead and just set that string aside for now, keep it in a safe place, and we are gonna come back to it later. All right, now that we've got all of our pieces cut out, I think that's a pretty good place to take a break, maybe give our brains a little bit of a rest. Uh, but join us next time when we will start stitching, we'll do a little bit of dividing, and actually a little bit of running. Stitches, that is. Um, before we go though, friends, we have enjoyed sharing um, our fur babies with you, but we would love 
for you to actually share yours with us. So if you want to use the hashtags here and below in the descriptions to share your pet pictures or videos with us on Facebook and Instagram, we'll be featuring some of your pets in our upcoming sew alongs. Because we know that while you all might come for the sewing, you stay for the pets and that's okay. Um, but we want to see some of your pets too. So friends, until next time, may your stitches be even and your needles be fierce. <laughs>